Welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to be doing a scene here using nature set number 23 imagery. All of these images are also available individually. But what I'm doing right here is I'm coloring the larger covered bridge uh, from the set. And what I did was I inked it up in all black, but I'm going into it now with some browns and some reds in the foliage. Okay, so that's the trees above the bridge and uh, below on the ground cover here. And I'm just doing that with a red pen. And we're going to stamp this piece of white coated silk, which is very similar to a matte cardstock. And you can use any type of paper that you would normally use your colored pencils on, okay? Now I've sped this video up at two times the speed just to get through it a little bit faster here, but you can really get the gist of what's going on at this speed here. So not too sped up, but uh, I don't know, just wanted to expedite it a little bit. So in this impression, you can see some of the reddish tinge in those trees, okay? So that gives me a little bit of a head start towards my uh, overall color scheme that I'm going to be applying to the scene. Now, <laughs> One of the things about this um, red pen that, uh, I don't know, I should have considered, but this pen was really, really juicy, so um, it didn't dry real fast on me, and I ended up putting my hand in it and kind of smudging the uh, card a little bit, so uh, so be it. Okay, now this was just a piece of scrap um, paper that I had, and the dimensions are, let me say, I think it's four by six and three quarters, so a little bit of an elongated piece. I don't know, I need to work on some kind of unconventional sizes once in a while. For me, it's always been the quarter size page at four and a quarter by five and a half, and I don't know, sometimes the elongated half pages, either the slimline card at uh, four and a quarter by 11, or just the standard, um, what is it, uh, five and a half by um, eight and a half. But I don't know. I love like unconventional sizes, like the real elongated ones or whatnot. Okay, so we stamped out those um, leaves with both red uh, tinges on it. I colored a little bit differently. And then I did a couple impressions in orange just for some variation and depth on that overhanging, um, uh, I don't know, grouping of uh, leaves. Okay, now I'm leaving some space below those leaves because I want to do a quote stamp from uh, Scenic Sentiments number one in there. Um, if I wasn't going to put a quote in there, it would be perfect for something like clouds. You can put a mountain back there or a smaller hill. You can put birds uh, flying across the sky, whatever you want, um, and it would look good in there. But, I don't know, I'm using a lot more of the quote stamps over this last uh, week or so. I don't know, I kind of go in and out of, uh, I don't know, patterns and whatnot. But I'm really enjoying using these quotes right now. And that one right there is very conducive for this overall look. Autumn of this is the second spring when every leaf becomes a flower, I think it says. <laughs> okay, so here's what I'm doing. This is the way that I utilize my different media, okay? Um, with colored pencils, I'm grabbing the colors that are going to be in a range of values going from light to dark in whatever hue I'm working in, okay? Now, in this case, it's also a, a range of a color scheme going from yellows to red. So in between there, there's going to be things like oranges and whatnot. And for my covered bridge, I want it to make it look kind of rustic and uh, we'll do it in wood. I don't know, there's painted covered bridges for sure, but I wanted to make it um, kind of a wooden one. So I have a, a, a range of um, values starting with a, you know, like a light tan or something like that and moving into the medium to darker browns. Now, as I started coloring with this, I realized, oh, even though this is kind of a, not a, um, a glossy cardstock, my inks were pretty wet, so here I am, heat setting, and then I realized, oh my gosh, that red pen that I colored those um, leaves with above are really quite wet, and the ink has kind of puddled up. Now normally, I mean, you could just 
let it set and let it dry for an hour and come back to it and it should be fine but heat setting it kind of expedites the process but there were still kind of little puddles of uh, wet ink in here but um, not so wet that it was uh, you know going to hamper my uh, ability to color this in but see where I'm coloring some of those trees uh, behind the bridge there were a couple little wet spots um, not sopping wet but kind of I don't know when you take out most of the moisture so where the ink is kind of like a gel now that was kind of spreading around um, when I was coloring back there but what I did was I just utilized that and I kind of spread out that reddish tinge I mean it wasn't like I said it wasn't super wet but it kind of blended out a little bit but see what I'm doing right here and it's not real visible in this uh, video right here I mean even for me up close I mean it's just a very light version of that tan that I'm applying it's kind of more of a base coat layer that I'm applying down there and it's kind of establishing my lighting scheme in a very very minimal way okay I'm not using something like black and going in here and establishing like hard shadows or anything like that but it's kind of giving me the gist of my both my color scheme and my lighting scheme okay now here's the most important part of anything that you might take from this video in terms of the coloring process okay now see as I'm coloring this colored covered bridge I'm not applying or I'm not going to be applying all of my color evenly okay now what you most people's inclination to do on scenes or just I don't know uh, stamped artwork in general is to color things uniformly now there's um, places where you can do that like with outline designs or something like that you might do an entire field or shape um, that's been defined by an outline in a very uniform application of color uh, a lot of times people will put a little bit of a vignette around something just to make it look a little bit more dimensional but if you want to create something that has depth and more of a three-dimensional space to it what you do is you you color as you normally would but then leave some areas lighter than others okay so in this case you can see I'm applying some of that brown down on the road but you can see some of it is lighter than other areas okay it's not a harder thing to do in fact you're doing less work now look at that covered bridge see on the side of the bridge I didn't color it evenly I've applied some of it down and I'm leaving some areas lighter than others okay and I'm going to follow that general um, kind of pattern as I move through my darker tones okay so I'm going to kind of follow my lighting scheme that I've established with these lighter tones okay and um, you wouldn't think I would use brown in the trees but just to give um, the covered bridge and the surrounding area more continuity you apply that to all the shapes around there okay so you bring in what you call we would call universal colors common colors into the different areas you don't have to do a real strong um, application of color but if you put a little bit of a lighter one like that see that brown in the background brown on the road okay which makes sense because it's a dirt road but um, you can also bring it into the leaves up there but just bring a you know a very light version of it and that way um, you'll create a relationship between all of the different areas okay now I don't know if I'd, I wouldn't bring you know brown into the water or something like that but uh, um, just about on everything else you can okay now see this with the darker colors I'm utilizing that for things like shadows but see that I'm still leaving a little bit of that area on top of the the roof light and I'm still retaining my lighter areas on my road okay but see this I mean this is a dark brown here but I'm just showing how I'm utilizing a very light version of it okay just by you know the use of um, adjusted pressure when applying that ink or not ink but the uh, the wax of the colored pencil okay so that was the browns now let's move into the leaves here the, the deciduous fall colored leaves 
And this is yellow, but see how it's a very pale application of yellow? I get a better feel of um, what my colors are going to be doing as far as influencing the area by applying a very light uh, application of it at first. I can always add more, but uh, it's always better to just kind of build it up slowly. You know, unless you're you know, a colored pencil um, practitioner and you're just, you know what I mean? And you really know what you're doing, which I do not with colored pencils. So I do it kind of in a very methodical way. I see what that color is going to be looking like as it um, develops and as it layers, okay? All right, so see, I'm kind of generally moving from light tones into my darker ones. That's my approach with colored pencils. That's my approach with colored pencils and dye-based inks. If I'm doing something like the um, acrylic paint pens, I do it the opposite. I go dark to light um, for a more rounded look, okay? three-dimensional. But with these other colors, transparent colors, translucent colors, um, it's more of a light to dark approach. Because, again, um, when I'm working it with very light tones at first and building up slowly, I can see what's developing in a very, very incremental um, manner. It's like the opposite of uh, something like calligraphy or something like that, where you know you're doing this instant application of media, and you know once you lay it down, that's it. Okay, this is something that's kind of coming into focus very, very slowly. If I like something, then I just keep adding more. Okay, now you can see those fall tones kind of you know coming about um, ever so slowly. And what is that in those fall colors? That's this is the sixth color I think that I'm using. Okay, and we're going in here and we're bringing this green into it. See how I'm bringing that green into that uh, kind of ground cover area, but I'm also bringing it into the trees. Uh, sometimes you know when I'm doing things this way too, uh, in a very incremental way, a lot of times it doesn't look very good until I get to I don't know one of the, the, the latter um, uh, colors that I'm using. Sometimes it, I have to go all the way to black or something like that, and it, that'll bring it together. But so yeah, you just work it through those lighter tones, but you know, you don't see, don't look at the lighter tones as the uh, kind of the end result that you're going to be getting, okay? You have to work it through those, uh, uh, that range of, of um, both um, hue and values, okay? But see how that, I mean, that looks pretty good now in terms of uh, that um, green. And now um, we're applying a little bit of blue down there into that water area. Not that all water has to be blue or anything like that, but I thought it provided a nice uh, kind of a hue change and maybe a temperature change to the area. Okay, now see I'm kind of going in with the darker blue and I'm putting it, you know, in some of those shadows down there. All right, now just to bring a little bit of this blue into a different areas, I'm putting just a very light application of it up on the uh, upper reaches of the card, okay? And I don't know if you can see it right there on the, uh, where I just pointed to right there. I smudged uh, some of those leaves um, earlier when I was doing the scene. I put my hand, I think it's before I heat set it, I put my hand into it and I got some smudgy areas around there. Okay, now look at this blue here. I'm putting some of this blue into that road where it's still a little bit light, but see that little tinge of blue down there? That cool and warm really, it tweaks the temperature scheme. And it kind of just fills that area out. It's not supposed to be like a cool road, like a frozen cool road or anything like that, but just that little minimal use of blue um, just kind of rounds things out really nicely. Okay, now I really should have heat set this a little bit more. So I'm going in with my cotton ball in this white pigment ink, okay? And we're going to add some air into this scene, okay? Now I think this scene looks pretty good as is, but just adding this additional tone. Now one of 
I start adding it in here and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm still picking up some of that red from that pen. So I had to be careful not to uh, keep smear smudging that some of that reddish tinge around. But see that white pigment ink over those trees there on the left hand side? Here, I, I thought, okay, I need to heat set this even more. I'm picking up some of that red that's still a little bit wet. Okay, so um, going back in with the pigment ink. And I'm adding it not over everything, okay? But I'll add it over some of the leaves. Now, see how that adds that air and light into those leaves like that? But it's also adding in an additional soft texture to the piece. So what you're doing is you're really expanding suddenly, in a very easy way, the textural range of your entire scene by adding a soft element into it, okay? Before, everything was pretty crisp, but adding in kind of this textural um, difference suddenly, uh, and again, from a textural standpoint, really changes the spirit of the piece, okay? Now, it's also doing something else at the same time. It's adding this um, kind of this lightness to the, to the piece, and it's putting like this air into the uh, into the composition because what this represents this little pigment ink down here and it's always where light meets dark okay you well not always but most of the time so see I'm putting it in the lighter areas of the road and then I'm putting bringing it out into that area around it okay now I'm doing it right down here in the water. Now see that? And also, see it's light above those trees and it's light below the leaves up top. So it's always kind of that little area like that. And look at that right there. To me, it hides a lot of my weaknesses in terms of my media application. I mean, in this one right here, I, you know, it even covered up some smudgy um, hand prints you know, where I went into that, um, those overhanging tree limbs there. Okay, now everything got really soft um, in terms of my white embellishment. Now I'm just showing some pens here. So just the way that we worked some of those colored pencils in a range of values within those given hues, you know, the oranges and browns and blues, light blue, darker blue, light green, darker green, yellow, orange, red, and light brown, darker brown. We can do the same thing with paint pens these days. They have these sets that are, you know, they're inexpensive. I, I don't work with expensive media. I generally try to avoid that. Um, I like getting kind of the looks that I'm going after, you know, with, I don't know, as inexpensively as I can to tell you. That. That's why I'm working with a lot of cotton balls and paper towels and I don't know, I use the same paper towel sometimes for several scenes if I'm doing a, um, I don't know, dye-based ink applications, okay? All right, uh, I just realized that pen right there I've never even used before, so I didn't want to take the time to uh, get it feeding, but I don't know, there's some of these pens I haven't even worked with yet. Here we're going in with the white, and again, see now with these pens I worked from, a darker tone to a lighter one, you know, so I worked with orange and now I'm applying white on top of that to give it that kind of sparkly, oh, kind of a lighting embellishment. When you're doing it with the white pigment ink, you're giving a very soft lighting embellishment. Now when you're going in with these little dots of uh, white and orange, you're giving it a very crisp lighting embellishment. It's like little sparkles coming off of a uh, uh, reflect, you know, reflected light coming off of all of the uh, different objects in the uh, the scene. You can even put it up here in the leaves. It's not something that stands out, you know, really obviously in a scene like this that isn't very dark. There's not a lot of contrast in between that, you know, between that white and the colors that are already laid down. All right. If you're doing a nighttime scene where it's, I don't know, navy and deep blues or something like that, that white pen can really stand out. So, I don't know, maybe you'd use like a light blue for your um, kind of lighting embellishment or something like that. Okay, now I'm spray, I'm heat setting those um, acrylic paint pen dots there. 
because I just applied it. So, all right, now I just pre-applied this um, blue uh, kind of frame on the back of my, or mat on the back of my white just to make this uh, project go faster. And I'm just applying it to this uh, dark glossy uh, cardstock um, mount. And there's your card, okay? So I hope you see kind of the benefit of doing that white pigment ink. Don't apply too much. Anytime someone tries it for the first time, they apply way too much pigment ink. So you kind of blot it off before you apply it, and you'll get that nice area um, application of it for your um, scenes like this. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.